with us as we go through our devotional service. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. If you would please stand for the reading of the scripture. We're talking about the institution of the Lord's Supper. I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 37. And it reads, For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it and remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup for he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we have judged ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home. Least come together for judgment, and the rest I will set in order when I come. God bless the reading of his holy word. Amen. Amen. I need the
Father God, talk to him, talk to him. Come here today as humble as I can. Talk to him. Father God, on today, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for safe travel, grace, and mercy. Thank you. Thank you thanking you for allowing me to have somewhat of a voice. Yes, sir. You, you have given me wisdom, knowledge. And I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to have a speaking voice today. I got a couple other procedures I need to go through. But I want to thank you in advance. Talk to him. Talk to him. For everything you've done, everything you're going to do. Yes, sir. On today, I ask you to just bless each and every one. Please, sir. Please, Under sir. Under the sound of my voice. Please, sir. Bless from the door to the pulpit. Please, sir. From the ceiling to the floor. Yes, sir. Provide for those who need. Yes, sir. Heavenly Father, touch them in only the way that you please, can. Please, sir. Please, sir. Heavenly Father, for the day is the day that you made. Yes, sir. And we're grateful to be in it. Yes, sir. On the day, Heavenly Father, I ask that you touch our pastor. Heavenly please, Father. sir. Please, sir. Use him in the way that you want to be him to be yeah. used. Yes, sir. Touch him and give him a message. Please, sir. Please, sir. That we can use today. Yes, sir. Let us go out and touch somebody. Yes, sir. So they can come in and say, talk what must him, I do to, to be saved? Heavenly Father, on today, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. For all that you have done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you're going to do. Thank you. Heavenly Father, I ask these blessings in your son's Jesus name. Amen. 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 I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Singing and praying with my mind. Stay on Jesus, singing and praying with my mind. Stay on Jesus, singing and praying with my mind. Stay on Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Keep your mind stayed on Jesus. It ain't no harm to keep your mind stayed on Jesus. It ain't no harm to keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah! 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 Woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. 
This concludes our devotion for today. We hope that you will keep your mind set on Jesus this morning. And we just ask that you sit back and enjoy the service and help everybody is blessed today. Amen. Good morning, True Love. It is Ordinance Sunday. It is Ordinance Sunday. Amen. Are we happy about that? We have a candidate today. We're always happy when one of God's children come to him. Amen. We want to thank you for being here this morning. And did you come to praise him? He said, we woke up this morning with our minds stayed on Jesus. Amen. And it ain't no harm to keep your mind on the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God today. We thank God for our pastor and for you and for our first lady and for our pastor Emeritus Jacobs, who's out of town right now, for Reverend Grant and others that are missing today. And to all my father's children, we greet you this morning with the master's word, peace. And we thank God for you being here. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to turn it over to our pastor now for our baptism. There's anyone want to come up? You can come on this side and take pictures. I'm excited about Jesus. How about you? Man. Glory to God. All right, choir, take me to the waters. Righteous, none but the righteous. Good morning, true love. Morning. Hallelujah. It's Ordinance Sunday. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Come on. Hallelujah. In the Baptist Church, we celebrate two ordinances. We ce celebrate uh, the baptism and the Lord's Supper. And today we're going to celebrate both in this service. And today we have one candidate who's going to come at this time. We have uh, Sister Hope Humes who's coming at this time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Sister Humes, in obedience to the great head of the church and by your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Isn't that awesome? He is awesome. Amen. Take me back a long, long time ago. Amen. 
Amen. I ain't going to tell my age this morning. Praise God for our pastor again and for our first lady and for it is Ordinance Sunday. Praise God. We want to welcome all of you today, our guests and our virtual guests today. And we want you to know that we are a church that love out loud. We love out loud through inreach and outreach. And we love you this morning. Amen. So why don't you stand up, shake yourself off, go speak to somebody that you haven't spoke to today, and tell them I'm glad you're here today. I'm so glad you're here today. If you just want to wave at them from your seat, just tell them you're glad they're here. Amen. And let's get ready for a hallelujah good time in the Lord today. He said, when you enter into his gates with thanksgiving, we enter his court with praise, and we bless his holy name. God bless you. Hey, hey. Love you, love you. I love you all. Praise God, praise God. We're going to have a, a selection from our praise team. Amen. Let's say amen and say come. Oh, come on, somebody bless the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord. He's a mighty God. He's a worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on, bless him. Oh, we serve a radical God. Surely he deserves a radical praise. I know you can do better than that. He's been faithful. He's been kind. He's been on time. Hallelujah. Come on, bless him in this house. Hallelujah. We give God honor today. We give honor praise. We're going to sing praises unto God because he's an awesome God. Has he been awesome to you? Has he been awesome to anyone? Can anybody testify today and say that God has been awesome? Hallelujah. We want you to sing and join with us. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. An awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Holy 
God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is the holy God. He reigns forever. You say, our God is the holy God. And he reigns forever and ever. Our God is the holy God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is a mighty God. He reigns forever and ever and ever. Our God is a mighty God. God. How many know we need prayer every day? Every day, every day. Somebody is hurting today. Somebody is hurting today. Somebody's in the hospital today. Somebody's in a nursing home today. Somebody is behind prison walls today crying to be free. Somebody is aching in their body this morning. I'm not feeling the best myself, but I'm here. And I'm thanking God for his mercy and his kindness. Amen. Because he got me up this morning. Hallelujah. He didn't have to, but he did. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. We want to thank God for his love and kindness, his multitudes attending mercy. And, you know, when we walk into the house of God, I, you know, I just got to say this, you know, just because I am who I am. Hallelujah, and he is who he is in my life. When we walk in the house of God, we need to stand and reverence God. When we walk in the house of God, we need to let God know. And right now we want to, we're going to uh, wait a moment, and we're going to have our pastor come in, I believe. Praise God. Amen. Let us stand. Let us stand. Let us stand. Let us stand. 
Make room for our pastor. Make room for our pastor. The shepherd of this house, amen. Senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Charles Hemphill Jr. Let's let him in. Let's make room for our pastor. Hallelujah. I am blessed to be under the shepherd. Glory to God. And what a mighty shepherd we have. Glory to God. Praise God, praise God. Again, it's prayer time. And we want to reverence God because he is the Lord of Lord and King of Kings. He is almighty. He is El Shaddai. He is almighty God. Hallelujah. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. Glory to God. We thank him today. Glory to God. Praise God. Put your mind toward heaven because heaven got his mind on you. Glory to God. Father, we thank you this morning. Father, we honor you this morning. Father, we give you the praise. We just stop to say thank you this morning. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Somebody didn't get up this morning, but God, you saw fit to allow us to rise. Father, we thank you. All week long, you kept us, Lord. All week long, you kept us, Lord, and you brought us up to this day. It's another first Sunday, Lord God, and we're in the seventh month of the year. And so, Lord, we thank you. Because you know it's been some seen and unseen dangers that we've been a part of, God. But you kept us through it all. We thank you, Father, for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your mercy, God. And we just come just praising you. We want to give you honor first, God. We want to give you honor first, God. We want to let you know that we love you, God. We extol you today, God. We magnify your name today. You are the lifter up of our bow down heads, God. God, you ease our troubled hearts, God. Oh, we thank you today, Lord God. And Father, we lift up your name today because you said in your word, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. We need to be drawn a little closer today, God. A little closer in love, a little closer in patience, Lord. Heal us today, God. We thank you today, God. Look around the heart of our, wall, our hearts today, God. Somewhere you saw sin this morning, I know. I don't know about nobody else, God, but maybe I came short this morning on my way to the house of worship. I ask you to forgive me today, God. Forgive us all today, God. Where will you come short, Lord God? And have your divine way today, God. We love you, Lord, because you said if we ask, Father God, you are faithful to forgive us, Lord God. You are faithful to forgive us for our sins. And you told us if we confess them before you, God, you will wash them all away God have your way today God we need you God we need you God there's so many God even on the prayer list today God I can't call everybody's name but God you are all knowing your all power your almighty God you know them all by name God and I know you as a healer you've been a lawyer in a courtroom for me God you've been a bit under my bed of affliction God and just like you did it for me you'll do it for somebody else, Lord. Help today, God. Help today, God. My heart is heavy, God. But God, you are lifted up of a bow down head and you ease our troubled hearts, God. Lift us up today, God. Father God, we thank you, Lord. And those that are sent their prayer requests, God, they're in the prayer box, God. I ask you to look and have mercy today, God. Whatever the needs is, oh God, you promise to meet our daily needs, Lord. And so we thank you for it right now, God. God. Hallelujah to name God. Hallelujah today, God. We miss Pastor uh, Emeritus Jacobs today and Mother Minnie today. We miss Reverend Dixon today. We miss Reverend Grant today. Oh, God, and so many others that want to be here. Sister Full and many others. Mother Jordan and so many more, God. But we ask you to touch right now, God. Touch where they are right now, God. Let them feel your healing virtue, God. Let them feel your saving grace. Praise God. Have your way today, God. Have your way, God. And we'll be careful always. Always, God. We pray, God, that you will bless our pastor today. Bless the word today. We need the word. For the word is what 
washes us. The word is what cleanses us. The word is what strengthens us, God. We need your word, God. Pour your spirit upon him on him, God, today. And let it pour out in you, oh God, which you have put in him. Let him pour it out on us, oh God. We thank you today. Bless everyone today around this altar, Lord. One needs you for one thing and another needs you for another. But God, I know they all need you for one thing or another, God. Have your divine way, God. Move by your spirit, God. Move by your spirit, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you and we give you the glory. We give you the honor, God. And we ask all these blessings in your son Jesus' name. And we believe it is so. And we call it done by the power of God in the name of Jesus. Every heart say amen. Amen. Amen again. Hallelujah. You can be seated under the presence of God. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to call for our amen. Amen. For our greeting right now and recognition of cards, sir. Oops. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm here to welcome our first term guests and our returning guests. So when I call your name, if you would please stand and remain standing. We have a Jennifer Browning. Uh, a, a Mr. Uh, Billings. Douglas, back there in the back. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. Charles Hinfield Jr. and his beautiful wife, Lady Stephanie, other ministers on the rostral, we in happy that you chose True Love to visit with today. And we'd like for you to know that we are a friendly church with eternal love and we say, don't just watch us grow, but please come back and grow with us. You're welcome, welcome, welcome. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are so grateful to God for uh, Sister Browning and Brother Billings. Uh, for your being here with us today. We are so delighted that God led you to True Love Missionary Baptist Church today to be a part of our worship service. Yes, sir. Amen. Okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to step up one step. Amen. Amen. Once again, we are so grateful to God for you being here, and uh, we pray that something will be said somewhere between the invocation and benediction that will move you beyond being uh, one of our friends who came to worship with us today. Maybe something will be said where God will move you that you might decide to be a part of this family. If by chance you are a member of another local church, please take our greetings back with you to your pastor and to your church family and let them know that we did everything we could to try to love you out loud today. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. At this time, my sisters and brothers, we are going to uh, welcome our newest sister into the body of Christ. Amen. Praise God. At this time, come on, let's put our hands together. Put some hands on it. The sister Hope Humes. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Have your turn and face. Take a picture here first. Amen. Amen. We get all our ministers and deacons to please come. What a Thank <laughs> you. 
into our head. and see what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Lit for Christ, y'all have a good time in the Lord back there now. Amen. Praise God. If there are any other youth, uh, children and youth uh, that desire to go into Lit for Christ for our youth church, uh, they are making their way back now to the fellowship hall to enter to Lit for Christ Sanctuary. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, my sisters and brothers, it's time for giving. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. It's time for the ministry of giving. In the back of your pews, one of the things that we have done over the past week, in the back of your pews, there are envelopes. Uh, for those of you that desire to give by envelope today, you can go ahead and pull one of those envelopes, fill it out. There are four ways that you can give. You can make your contribution to True Love Missionary Baptist Church. You may give by placing your offering envelope in our offering as we come march around in a few moments. Our ushers are going to show you what to do. They're going to show you how to march around here. They're going to have some giving music. Amen. Praise God. The second way to give, you can give electronically by going to our website, third way as well. Go to our website at truelovembclv.com, or you can go to our giving app at Ministry One. Look for True Love Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. You can also give by making your contribution to True Love Missionary Baptist Church, 1941 North 8th Street, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89106. Amen. Uh, my sisters and brothers, the word of God says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they who dwell therein. I want you to recognize and realize that everything that you are, everything that you have, everything that you ever desire and hope to become is because of the Lord. God only asks for us to give a portion of what he's given to us back to him. God deserves to have the whole hundred. He gave us the whole hundred, but he only asks for a portion. And so, my sisters and brothers, let us faithfully, cheerfully give unto the Lord for the upbuilding of his kingdom here on earth. Our ushers are going to come around now. Amen. You'll be under the direction of our ushers for our time, our ministry of giving. Come on now. <laughs>
Come on, choir. Hey, mother. Amen. Would you help us pray and praise God for the blessings? God, what a privilege and an opportunity, Lord God, you've given us to give a portion of what you've given unto us back to you. God, we thank you that you didn't ask us to give, Lord God, uh, without you first giving to us. We thank you, God, for every blessing that's had our name on it. For, Lord God, the blessings, Lord God, that have been seen and unseen, God. Lord God, for the ways that you've made ways, Lord God, we didn't know how ends were going to meet. Oftentimes, Lord God, we found ourselves with more month than we had money. Yeah. Oh, God, but you had a blessing yes, you. with our name on it. Because you've been faithful, Lord God, it's our turn to be faithful. You said in your word that obedience is greater than sacrifice. 
And we know, Lord God, there's been a greater sacrifice for some than it is for all of us, Lord. So God, pour a blessing out upon those who gave, pour a blessing out upon the lives of those of Lord God who had nothing to sacrifice this day. And God, we just pray that you'll pour out your blessings and your anointing upon our officers of this church. That these, our gifts, Lord God, will be faithfully used for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. Thank you, Lord God, for blessing us. And now we bless you right back. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. God's got a blessing with your name on it. Amen. It's time for our video announcements, please. Video announcements. Praise the Lord. the Lord, everyone. Here are our announcements and upcoming events. Dive deep into the Word with us every day by joining us in our Upreach, Inreach, and Outreach weekly studies. This information can be found on our website. Let's get fueled in the Word together. Throughout the summer months, as temperatures continue to rise in the Las Vegas area, Body and Soul is reminding you to stay safe during the extreme heat, seek a cool place, and stay hydrated. Learn the signs and symptoms of heat stroke and heat exhaustion. Always seek medical attention when needed, and do not leave your child or pet in a hot car. For more information, please see a member of the Body and Soul Ministry. All ministry leaders must fill out a budget form for all quarter three expenses, which is July, August, and September. Forms can be found in the back hallway of the church, and once completed, please return them in the folder marked Completed Forms. For more information, please see Sister Tori. Ladies, Women United in Christ wants to grow through sisterhood and thrive in faith with you. Join WUIC for the monthly meeting on this Wednesday, July 10th at 6.30 p.m. This will be held in the Reverend I.W. Wilson Fellowship Hall. For more information, please see Evangelist Kelly Jackson or Lady Stephanie Hemphill. Hey, True Love family. It's that time again. We will be having our back-to-school drive starting Sunday, July 14th through July 28th. We are asking for backpacks, notebooks, three ring binders, pencils, pens, crayons, folders, color pencils, rulers, highlighters, and washable markers. All donations can be placed in the bins located in the lobby or the fellowship hall. All the supplies will be distributed to our youth on Sunday, July 28th, following worship service. If you would like to give a monetary donation, you may give through Ministry One or place your donation in an envelope and place that in the offering basket. Thank you. Remember, you are a part of this family, and we can't do this without you. If you would like to get connected to a ministry, please fill out a ministry connection card and place it in the offering basket or hand it to one of our warm and friendly ushers. To stay connected to what's happening here at True Love, download the easy-to-use Ministry One app and search for True Love. This will give you access to all announcements, events, past sermons, and so much more. You can also follow us on our website at www.truelovembclv.com. And feel free to follow us on our other social media platforms. As always, let's remember our sick, shut-in, and bereavement families. Special news report. To God be the glory for the things he has done. This coming weekend, True Love, we will be celebrating 50 years of God's abundant grace. The celebration will begin Friday right here at True Love with the prayer service. 
on Saturday will be the gala at the Palace Station. And the finale will be held Sunday, July 14th, right here at the Friendly Church with Eternal Love. For more information, please see Sister Sheila Bird. Here's the thought of the week. In the end, it's not the years in your life that count. It's the life in your years. Thank you so much for tuning in to our announcements. Don't just watch us grow, grow with us. Have a blessed week and remember to love out loud. Amen. Come on and give God praise. Amen. One want just remind you, we did have the announcement about school supplies. We want to make sure that you do that. But we're also going to lift a special offering at the end of this month as well for our teachers, those who are in the classrooms, uh, our teachers, many of them, they dip into their own wallets, into their own bank accounts to make sure that there are supplies and everything that they need adequate so that they can teach our children. So one of the things we want to do, we want to be a giving church, a church that loves out loud. And so we want to make sure that we love out loud all of our school teachers. With all of our school teachers that are in the sanctuary right now, would you please stand this right now? School teachers, school teachers. Amen. Okay. We had more last week, amen, but thank you, Sister Towns, amen. But we do have about four or five uh, other teachers that uh, normally that stood with us last Sunday, and we will collect that offering. We'll, I'll let you know when we're going to do it to give you some advance notice, but we want to lift an offering so that we can help them so they won't have to dig as deep this year, amen, especially this first semester, this first semester of school, so we want to be a blessing to them, amen. amen. Oh, y'all know y'all can do better than that. <laughs> We're a church that loves out loud. If we can't love out loud our, me our members and those who, who are educating our children, amen. We're missing the whole point. Amen. At this time, our music ministry is going to come. They're going to come and bless us. Amen. Before we hear the word, praise the Lord. Come on, Sister Baldwin.
Hallelujah. Write the vision. He will do just what he said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stand all around the church. Amen. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such a special way. I 
I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you said for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. Come on now, sing it like you mean it. I love you. I love you. Oh, and back. So me. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. And I magnify your name. Won't you join me for a word of prayer? Well, here we are, Lord God. It's treaching time. God, we've gathered around the feet of your throne, and we await to hear the word from glory. I pray now, Lord God, that you will sit me down and let Jesus now stand in my body. Oh God, I surrender my mind, cause me to think your thoughts. I surrender my mouth, Lord God. I pray that you'll put your words in my mouth, oh God. And as your word goes forth with power and might, Lord God, may it accomplish the purpose for which you've sent it. Oh God, I pray right now for a fresh anointing. Lord God, not so that I can preach a message that sounds good, but rather that I preach a word today, Lord, that will do some good. And to that end, we pray and we pray now, Lord God, that you'll speak now for your children are listening. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. That's why. why my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, put some hands on it and give God praise. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today, my sisters and brothers, we have a word coming to us from 1 Peter chapter 2. Verses 9 and 10. First Peter chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. First oh, Peter 9 and 10. But you are a chosen generation. First Peter chapter 2. There we go. Praise the Lord. God bless you, media. Uh, the words are on the screen. Let us read together. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have attained mercy. Amen, amen. As you go to your seats, my sisters and brothers, I want to preach, uh, actually, we're going to read one more thing here in a moment. Would you put up our, uh, that first uh, paragraph? Today, sisters and brothers, we are starting a new uh, series uh, entitled The Writings on the Wall. Amen. And in this first uh, part of our series, and uh, we're going to be going through the church covenant. Uh, praise the Lord. Amen. And we're going to read this together. Amen. I'm going to step over here. <laughs> Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we do not 
now in the presence of God and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter in covenant with one another as one body in Christ. Amen. The writings on the wall, and for this first installment, I want to treat for a little while from the thought, we matter to God. We, we matter to God. We matter to God. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, from February to June, the focus of TNT, that's Thursday night teaching, the class where I have the honor of teaching on Thursday nights, uh, we taught on the Baptist Church Covenant. We literally worked our way through each line and paragraph of the covenant. Uh, the covenant, my sisters and brothers, was our subject matter, and it, it made the cut uh, out of all the things that I wanted to study and I wanted to share with you and make an impartation on Thursday night teaching, uh, the, the covenant made the cut. Now, let me help you understand how that happened. It was inspired by our very own Deacon David Burney, a man, a man of God who early on in his walk with Christ was profoundly moved by reading of this writing on the wall. In fact, my sisters and brothers, uh, he found in the writing on the wall in the church covenant a blueprint, if you will, for his personal walk as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And upon uh, relocating to Las Vegas, Nevada from Alaska, he embraced it as a sign that true love was the church where the Holy Spirit led him to continue to carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. My sisters and brothers, by the time we reached the conclusion of our study on the Baptist Church Covenant, the Lord commissioned me to turn our study into a five-part sermon series, and we were going to treat on the writing is on the wall, subtitled Disciplines for Developing Dynamic Disciples. And, and I pray, sisters and brothers, that you'll take this sermonic journey with us seriously, for the Holy Spirit wants to pour out biblical principles into our lives. He wants to unpack, if you will, this covenant. He wants to transform each and every one of us and turn us into dynamic disciples for the Lord Jesus Christ. And all I want to know today is, will y'all walk with me for a little while? My sisters and brothers in First and Second Peter, uh, they, the First and Second Peter were penned by Apostle Peter. Paul, Peter rather wrote to Christians scattered across the Roman provinces of Asia Minor. Ironically, my sisters and brothers, these churches that he spoke to, these Christians, if you will, that he spoke to were a blended people. They were made up of Jews and Gentiles. And that was ironic to me, sisters and brothers, because it points to the growth and the transformation of the apostle Peter as a true apostle and early father of the Christian church, establishing works and order in the name of the Lord. Despite his early Earlier prejudices, sisters and brothers, upon visiting the home of Cornelius. That's when the Lord changed Peter's mindset, allowing him to perceive of a truth. God is no respecter of persons. In 1 Peter, sisters and brothers, Apostle Peter takes his apostolic authority and he pins a personal message of encouragement to this Christian body residing in Asia Minor, encouraging them to persevere despite the persecution that they face, to live holy lives that reflected their new identity in Christ Jesus as God's chosen people and people, sisters and brothers, that are chosen people, that are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a special position possession that belong to God. Now stay with me because it's in 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 4 through 8 that Peter considers and shares with the teaching uh, that Jesus is a living stone. He's a living stone that was rejected by men but chosen and precious to God. Like living stone sisters and brothers, believers are being built into the spiritual house to be a holy priesthood unto God. 
Peter contrasts something also, sisters and brothers, that those who believe in Jesus and hold him as precious against those who reject him, those for whom he has become a stone that has caused them to stumble. Peter simply saying to us today that in order for us to survive the challenges and suffering and persecution, in order for us to overcome and endure persecution. One's relationship with God in Christ Jesus must be both personal and consistent. It cannot be a dab or do you type of relationship. We've got to be consistent in our relationship with the Lord. Moreover, Peter, sisters and brothers, wanted the people to hang their hope on the word of the Lord. For Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are ye who, who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and they shall say all of evil against you my, for my sake rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven then my sisters and brothers as we push forward we fast forward to verses 9 and 10 Peter shifts to affirming the believers identity and purpose he contrasts their previous state with their new status in Christ Jesus he used the Old Testament language, sisters and brothers, that originally described Israel to describe the church, emphasizing their role in God's plan and their mission to declare the praises of God unto him. Now, I want to challenge you. I want you to come along with me in this journey. We got to dig a little bit deeper because our sermonic spotlight now focuses on this text and the writing on the wall. Are y'all with me? But more importantly, sisters and brothers, I need you to walk away today knowing that we matter to God. We matter to God. Will y'all dig into the text with me? Look, look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. We just want to look at the A portion of that verse. He said, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, a people who matter to God know who they are in Christ Jesus. That's the first thing that you need to understand. If you want to recognize that you matter to God, you've got to first understand, sisters and brothers, who you are in Christ Jesus. Uh, first, cha first Peter chapter 2, verse 9, describes a covenant community, and he says it looks a little something like this. It's a people that are led by the Spirit into communion with others in the whom the Spirit is also performing the same work in them. Let, let me see if I can chew that up and give it back to you. What he's saying is that when you, sisters and brothers, are in a covenant community, this is the way it looks, that the same spirit that's working in your brother and your sister is the same spirit that's working things out in you. And despite our individuality, the God who calls us out of darkness makes us lively stones in the house that is the spirit is framing. The spirit is building, is founding, is, is framing. And now check the text. Peter says that in Christ, we are a chosen generation. I like that, sisters and brothers, because chosen tells me, sisters and brothers, that the reality of our being is not our initiative. It's not your choosing, but it's God's choosing. It's not your decision, but it's God's decision. Y'all check the text with me now, sisters and brothers. Our being chosen is clearly and unequivocally the act of God. It's God's choosing. We are chosen in Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world. We are begotten by the word born of incorruptible seed that lives and abides forever. And keep in mind, sisters and brothers, that nothing else, nothing else than the choice of God and the prerogative of God will, sisters and brothers, make us the people of God. Yes. Only God can make us the people of God. Are y'all in the building with me? 
I need you to understand that obedience to God and love for one another sustains the covenant community's relationship, but the choice of God initiates the covenant and gives it its integrity. Whereas the former generation traced its roots back to the Abrahamic line uh, through the seed of Isaac and Jacob as well, the new generation is gathered via, the, uh, via rather, their faithful response to the gospel, the call of God by faith in Jesus. Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God. He who calls us to deny ourselves and to take up our own crosses and then come follow him. But I need you to understand being God's choice, that doesn't make you better than anybody else. Being God's choice doesn't give you the right to look down your nose at somebody else. No, being God's choice recognizing that it was God's favor and God's grace that called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. It was God's prerogative to, that you would be an example to those outside of the community, of uh, the covenant community, on how the prerogative and the handiwork of God, the God who is the potter who puts broken vessels back together are y'all in the building with me today? Uh, he, he not only teaches us that we are a chosen generation, uh, but Peter teaches us that we are also a royal priesthood. Uh huh. You, you're a royal priesthood. You've been anointed to rule and serve God's creation. God the Son offered the perfect obedience unto God, and by the anointing of the Spirit, the same obedience is given to you and to me, and it's expected of us to live the same way. In, in, in the Old Testament, the Old Testament priesthood belonged to particular families, but now the priesthood is of Jesus Christ. The priest and sacrifice who offered himself upon heaven's altar as a full, perfect, and ultimate sacrifice. Not only, sisters and brothers, are we a chosen generation, but we are a royal priesthood. And we're a royal priesthood, Reverend Johnson, by, by virtue of, of being a part of this royal priesthood. Each of us can make an offering to God. Each of us can boldly approach the throne of grace in the time of need. But we must also exercise the authority of our priesthood, making intercession for people who are in need and people who are lost and people who are under burden and need strength. And we must cooperate with God in the work of redemption and strengthening the church. We are chosen generation. A royal priesthood, but that's not all. He, he said we're a holy nation. Are y'all in the book with me? We are to be holy in all of our conduct, sisters and brothers, to the end. That we are the reflections of the God who says, be holy, for I am holy. One, one, one of my, my preaching mentors, one of my preaching mentors, he once said, it's all right to be a copycat. As long as you copy in the right cat. Why not copy God, sisters and brothers? Why not copy him so close that we too might hear seraphim speak of us and calling and crying out, holy, holy, holy. We've got to learn how to copy the right cat. And I love that, sisters and brothers, because not only do we see holy, 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 but one of the other things that we do not see in the scripture is you've got to understand that God, my sisters and brothers, is love. Now we say God is love, but nowhere in the scriptures do we see love 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 yeah he's sovereign nowhere in the word of God do we see sovereign 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 he's righteous but we never see righteous 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 no but our God is holy and the seraphim said holy 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 so in this instance, if we're going to be copycats, let's copy the right cat and be holy like our God is holy. For there is none like the Lord. He stands alone. He stands all by himself. He's uncomparable to anything and to anybody. He's God all by him. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. 
to be a holy nation. That don't mean you're going to be perfect. Mm. But it does mean that you're a people that recognize that you're set apart to love God out loud and your neighbor as you love yourself. But that's not all that Peter says. Peter, and I like the way the 1611 King James Version puts it, he says that we are a peculiar people. <laughs> now, from the context of our, our everyday conversations, a peculiar is often defined as odd or strange or weird. But in the context of this verse, Peter is telling us that we are peculiar because we are precious in the sight of our God. That we are peculiar because, my sisters and brothers, God has promised to care for us and to protect us and defend us. We are peculiar because the people of God, as God denoted about Job one day when Satan tried to get God to take Job off the, sea, the scene, God said, there's none like him in all the earth. Are y'all in the building with me? So I'll take peculiar. Call me peculiar. Go ahead and look me in the eye and call me peculiar because what it says is that I'm unique. Hello, somebody. It says that I've set my affections on things above. It says, sisters and brothers, that I see life and the world through the lens of God. And although we are in the world, we are not of the world because go ahead and call me peculiar because I'm a citizen of heaven. Secondly, I need you to understand and see in the text, uh, this in the B portion of the text in verse 9, where he says that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We got to understand that the people who matter to God uh, know why they are who they are. Mm, that's good to me. That was good to me right there. You got to know why you are who you are. People who matter to God Though we live in the world and understand we are not of the world, while living in the world, we are living to please the God who created the world and everything that is in it. People who matter to God recognize that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God while praising God because they know that they have not been preserved by their own righteousness, but it is God who leads us in the path of righteousness name say people who matter to God recognize that despite their giftedness and the uniqueness of their gifts all gifts are recognized in the spiritual house of God and they are all offerings to be sacrificed unto God by Christ Jesus but above all the people who matter to God know the reason that we are who we are is because God created us to offer him praise yes. glory yes. And honor. People who matter to God know that God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And to miss that facet of our calling is to miss everything about your discipleship. People forsake not the assembly of yourselves together. They we gather to partake of God, to offer sacrifices unto God upon his altar, to offer him the sacrifice of praise, to enter worship, to depart to serve, so that we can tell Lottie, Dottie, and everybody to taste and see that the Lord is good. And then, sisters and brothers, after we leave this place, we wait another six, seven days until we can come back in here again and celebrate the goodness of God all over again and share our testimonies that you don't know what the Lord has done for me. God has been good to me. Look and see what the Lord done done. I know that's not good English. Oh, but it sure does preach good, don't it? Uh, it's not good English. So look and see what the Lord done done. It, it, that, that's not good English, amen, but, but it preaches well. Hello, somebody. And the third thing I need you to say, two and we're through. Two and we're through. People who matter to God know that they are mercifully changed. Ah, that's glory to God. We know that we are mercifully changed. That's in verse 10. Who, were once, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Uh, understand, in times past, we were not a people. But now we are a people which obtained mercy 
Ah, yeah, glory to God. We've attained. Mer can, I, can I chew that up for you? That, that means that one time you were not God's child. At one time you were not a part of God's people. And I need for somebody to understand, Brother Tolliver, there's a difference between being a cre part of God's creation and being one of God's children. Y'all don't want to pray up in here with me. There's a difference between being a part of his creation and being one of his children. Uh, John 1, 11 and 12 says that he came unto his own and his own received him not, but to as many that received him to them, he gave the power, he gave the right to be sons of the living God. Are y'all still in the building with me? Even them that believe on his name. Now, understand, during Jesus' earthly ministry, Jewish leadership and the people, they rejected the Lord. Although they were awaiting the coming of the Messiah, they knew that the Messiah was coming, but when Jesus came on the scene and they recognized him, they rejected him instead. They rejected him and they did not receive him but those who receive Jesus the scripture declares he gives them the right the power to become the children of God those who receive Jesus receive his substitutionary death those who receive Jesus receive his atoning act on our behalf. Those who receive Jesus, receive him, and based upon receiving Jesus, believing in his salvific work, we are born again, adopted into the family of God as the children of God. Now, don't you get it twisted, though, because all of us are part of God's good creation. But until you receive Christ Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord, you are not God's child. Oh, y'all don't want to pray up in here with me. Until you recognize that by grace are you saved by faith and not of yourselves, that our salvation is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. None of us are children of God. Until that happens, none of us have received the mercy of God. And I've taught you before, true love, the mercy of God is when God withholds that which you deserve. Oh, y'all better pray up in here. And the last time I checked, uh, the wages of sin is death. Oh, yeah, that's what we deserve. But because of Jesus, God has shown us mercy. And the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Would somebody help me give God some praise just for about 20 seconds? Help me give God some praise for about 15 more seconds. Will y'all help me give God some more praise for about 10 more seconds? Help me give God praise for five more seconds because of his mercy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I wish somebody would help me give God praise for forgiving us, for giving us Jesus Christ. Help give God praise for giving us eternal life. Help me give God praise because we deserve death, hell, and the grave. Will you help me give God praise because he sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through the world, the world might be saved through him. Thank God for his mercy. Last one and I'm done. Last one and I'm done. Come on, JR, you're pushing me. You're pushing me. Hallelujah. Last one and I'm done. That first paragraph, that first paragraph of the church covenant, it, it reads, it reads, sisters and brothers, uh, and, and I want to give you this last point. Last one and I'm done. Uh, uh, people who matter to God know that they are God's covenant people. 
Uh, yeah, the, the, we're his covenant people. Now, the first paragraph of the church covenant, it reads, Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. Now, I need to understand a couple uh, quick facts and then I'm going to shout you and take my seat. Uh, the church covenant, sisters and brothers, was originally written by John Newton Brown and it was published in the Baptist Church Manual in 1853. It was adopted, though, by an individual congregation that emerged from the free church movement. The congregation concluded that the Lord, the local church is a community of believers voluntarily joined together to worship and serve God. It's in that Baptist church covenant, sisters and brothers, that Christians are challenged to take a stand. Those who accepted the covenant before we did, they are saying that we are a community of baptized believers who stand for something. We're not a bunch of people, sisters and brothers, who gather and call one another brothers and sisters without there being Jesus Christ as the foundation for our very being. Because if Jesus is not the foundation and the center of who we are, we're no better than fraternities and sororities. We don't gather, sisters and brothers, to hear the choir sing songs without understanding that they're singing praises unto God. This isn't a concert. This is worship. We're the people of God, and we stand for something and because we stand for something there's a certain way that we've got to behave by which we strive to live and to love God with all of our heart our soul and our mind now understand a covenant is an agreement between two or more parties wherein one or both party agree to do certain things my friends we live in a time in a day when people shy away from making commitments to a church People visit churches, and they shop around for churches. They're shopping around for a church home that fits their personal needs. And when their personal needs change, they oftentimes change membership too. We live in a time and a day when people no longer feel as though they've got to be loyal to a church home or to a particular denomination. So the idea of being in a covenant relationship with other Christians is a foreign idea to them. However, this historic church covenant provides us with a framework for Christians who are living out their faith in the Baptist church. As to the nature of the local church, its ministry, and its mission. God's covenant with Israel was established at Mount Sinai with sacrifices. However, our new covenant with God is established through Christ Jesus. It was established through his sacrificial death on a cross called Mount Calvary. Therefore, my sisters and brothers, understand the covenant that we have with each other in the church is founded upon the work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. For this covenant to be established scripturally, there had to be a sacrifice. There had to be a death. We come to understand, sisters and brothers, that only baptized believers, those who have been led by the Spirit of God to profess and receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, those who have been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, only baptized believers can solemnly and joyfully enter into this covenant. Now understand, solemnly suggest that we're entering this covenant, uh, my sisters and brothers. It doesn't mean, sisters and brothers, what you've heard the word solemn mean before. But I need you to understand that when we say solemnly, it means it's a serious matter. 
this is a serious matter because being bound and in covenant is serious business. It requires that we treat one another, uh, sisters and brothers, in the manner in which we desire to be treated. It requires that we treat one another differently, maintaining the mindset that God uh, has for us, that we are to be in oneness. Always are recognizing that when we're not operating out of oneness and we're causing division and dissension among the people of God, God is watching us. God's got his eye on you. You may think you're getting away with whatever you're saying about the other brothers and sisters in Christ, but the eyes of God are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Every time I officiate a wedding or someone unites with true love in the words that I share or the prayer that I pray over them, I never fail to mention uh, that God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. Therefore, the manner in which we treat the gift reflects how we feel about the giver. Are y'all in the building with me? So no matter if your union is to a spouse or to this house, I ask that you remember that everybody is a gift from God. Watch how you treat me. Watch how you treat one another. I'm a gift of God, created in his image and after his likeness. The way you treat me reflects how you feel about him. Not only do we enter this solemnly, but we've also got to enter it joyfully. <laughs> Glory be to God. This is serious business, and this serious business right here has to be entered into joyfully. Solemnity and joy are not opposite, sisters and brothers. They go hand in hand because entering the covenant is serious business and wrapped up in this opportunity is the journey, uh, the opportunity to journey as one. And there is joy that comes when we praise and serve our God. There's joy when we recognize, sisters and brothers, that the closer we get to God, the more joy we receive from God. The joy that we have is a fruit of the Spirit. The joy that we have is a byproduct of forgiven sin and our communion with the risen Christ in the power of the Spirit. Our joy must characterize our fellowship, our worship, and all that we do in the name of Jesus Christ. We must never frustrate joy by seeking glory. We must never frustrate joy by self-vindication. We must never frustrate joy by present day rewards for the glory always belongs to God while the joy belongs to the people of God. When we recognize that we are chosen by God for a unique assignment in the earth, we know we matter to God. When we honor uh, the priesthood of all believers and the church is strengthened and unified, living and moving as true disciples, we know we matter to God. When we strive to live holy every second, every minute, every hour, every day, sisters and brothers, we demonstrate that we know we matter to God. When we embrace uh, one another and embrace our being a peculiar people, God's own possession, his own possession, declaring praises unto him, we understand that we matter to God. When we allow the Spirit of the Lord to lead us to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, when we surrender to the Spirit's guiding to profess our faith in Christ Jesus, when we enter into this covenant, our relationship via baptism in the name of the Trinity, we understand that we matter 
to God. When we recognize that we all are under the gaze of God, angels and the assembly of God, we solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another. We declare that we matter to God. Yes, we matter to God. How do you know we matter to God? For the Bible says, for God so loved the world <laughs> that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him <laughs> should not perish <laughs> but have everlasting life. <laughs> we matter to God. <laughs> How do I know we matter to God? <laughs> For the Bible says that God proves his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. We matter to God. How do you know that, preacher? I know we matter to God because he thought we were worth saving. So he came and changed our lives. He thought we were worth keeping. So he cleaned us up inside. He thought we were to die for. So he sacrificed his life so that we could be free, so we could be whole, so we could tell everyone we know. Oh. So we can tell everyone we know. That we matter to God. I know you've been in some experiences where people told you didn't matter and you weren't nothing. Your mama wasn't nothing. Your daddy wasn't nothing. But you are special to God. You're the apple of God's eye. God thought so much of you that he sent his only begotten son to die for your sins and for my... You matter to God. If nobody else tells you you're important, always remember, child of God, that you matter to God. The writing's on the wall. I know you sometimes pass by it and you never check it out, but the writing's on the wall. These are God's expectations for us as the body of Christ, as a local church, sisters and brothers. This is how we develop ourselves, how God develops us to be dynamic disciples for the Lord Jesus Christ. We got to solemnly and joyfully enter into this covenant. And we do so because you matter to God. We're standing all around the church. We're standing all around the church. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for the reminders that we matter to you that you thought we were worth saving. You thought we were worth keeping. And you thought we were to die for. So many times, Lord God, we're in relationships with people and they tell us, I love you to death. But Lord God, that sounds nice. That sounds cliche. That sounds like, Lord God, uh, that sounds like a good thing in the moment. But you said it, Lord God, and you gave Jesus and you expressed your love for us. And God, we thank you that you were willing to die for us. So much so, Lord God, that Jesus died for us, Lord God, because, and he took the nails because he couldn't fathom spending eternity without us. Thank you for letting us know that we matter. God, others have thought about throwing us away, kicking us to the curb. God, we've been kicked under the bus even. But we thank you, Lord God, that we matter to you. Thank you for being the divine potter who puts us back together again. 
We've been broken and we've been shattered, but Lord, you love us so much that you put us back together again. And God, I pray that you've spoken to someone here under the sound of my voice. Some brother, some sister right now, Lord, who doesn't know you in the pardoning of their sins. They don't know you as a forgiving God that we know you as. They don't know you as a loving God that we know you as. They don't know that they matter to you. Lord God, I pray right now that you'll speak to their hearts right now. Open their eyes, Lord God. One of the ways they can tell that they matter is they're still here. That they're here today clothing in their right mind. Or all the mind they got left. But they're here. God, remind them that they matter to you. That, Lord God, that Jesus' death was a gift of grace, but it wasn't cheap grace. That you had to watch your only begotten son nailed to a cross. You had to watch him beaten, Lord God. You had to watch all of the horrific acts that were done to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you allowed it, Lord God, and Jesus stayed on the cross. He didn't come down because we matter to you. Speak, God. Speak now, God. Save somebody now, God. Deliver somebody right now, God. Speak to that broken heart right now, God. Speak to that troubled mind right now, God. Whether they are here or they're in our virtual sanctuary, God. Because we know, God, that which has been spoken and preached in here transcends even streaming. Minister now, Holy Spirit. Speak now. Your children are listening. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If, if you heard the Lord speak to you during that prayer, I want you to step out into the aisle and come here. Come to me. Give me a hand and give the Lord Jesus Christ your heart. I want you to know today the Lord does love you and that you do matter to him. And we want you to become a part of this church. Amen. Don't let this moment pass you by. Now, 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 I want to, I, I, so, so, oh, glory to God. Help me to say this right, Holy Ghost. Somebody here under the sound of my voice, you've been coming to true love, and you've been coming to be a part of worship. You haven't moved. You haven't stepped out into the aisle yet. Don't hold up the service. Don't hold up the service. But I need you to come today. Come just the way you are. If you're afraid to walk by yourself, ask your neighbor to walk with you. You don't want them to touch you or walk with you. Slip your hand in the air and I'll come get you. I ain't too proud to beg. And I'll come walk with you today. It's just that important. It's just that real. Don't worry about who's looking at you. They don't have heaven nor hell to put you in. But there is a God who sits up high and he looks down low. Come on, encourage her, encourage her. I don't know why you playing with me. You playing with me today. Yeah, you, you sitting back there and you, you playing with me. Amen. You've been coming, and you've been eating at the table, and you're treated like a repast and try to put a plate on top of the plate and walk out with a doggy back. There is a place for you at the table. No more doggy bags. No more aluminum foil on top of your plate. Come and be a part of this family. We want to be your church family, and I want to be your pastor. Where are you? Where are you right now? Where are you? Did you grab my towel? Yes, sir.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, true love, I need y'all to go to work in the pews and ask the people sitting next to you, uh, do you have a home church? Are you say If they say anything other than yes, tell them I'll walk with you. Come on, witness. Go to work, true love. Go to work. Go to work. Go to work. Go to work. Amen. My, my towel. Would you get my towel? My towel. Come on, put your blessed hands together. Come on, put some hands on it. Hallelujah. There's no reason that you got to be outside of the ark of safety. You in the right place at the right time. This is the right church. These are the right members, brothers and sisters. This is the right moment. You're never going to find a perfect church. Well, guess what? You'll hold us back from being close to perfect because you're not here. The only thing that's missing from this church is you. Is there another today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Good afternoon, uh, church. Uh, to Pastor Hemphill Glory and members of True Love. Today, as I state your name, um, please stand. Uh, first, we have Brother Dwayne. He's here for prayer. Uh, Amen. Amen. Heart, heart, mind. Anyone else for prayer here? Okay. All right, Brother Dwayne. Excuse me, I'm going to slide to the left. <laughs> slide to the right. Brother Dwayne, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, God, with Brother Dwayne. God, he's got heart problems, and he's got, Lord God, there are things that are going on in his mind right now, God. But I pray right now, we pray, God, as the family of God. He is a member of this family, Lord God. The family that prays together stays together. If one of us suffers, we all suffer. If one is honored, we should all rejoice. And God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we unite our faith with his faith. And we ask, God, that you will move by your spirit. Move by your power, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that you'll show the doctors, Lord God, what's going on with his heart, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you'll show, Lord God, the doctors what's going on in his mind, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we praise you, Lord God, because this is a body that you created. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, if nobody else can fix it, we know Jesus can. We know that you can. We know that you will. Pour your spirit out, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, touch him from the top of his head down to the soles of his feet. God, where we pray in the name of Jesus that he will hear your voice, God. Lord God, when the doctors give him direction, let him hear your voice, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let him believe in his heart, Lord God, that you are a healer and a deliverer name of Jesus, yes. that you've got more medicine in the hem of your garment than the, the pharmacies all throughout Vegas even carry, yes. that more medicine than the hem of your garment yes. than a doctor even knows to prescribe. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, heal, Lord God. Touch, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray, Lord God, for miracles to happen in his life. We pray in advance, God, and we praise you in advance for the testimony that he'll have and he'll share, Lord, with the body of Christ. That he comes and he says, look and see what the Lord has done. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Doctors counted me out, but I'm still here. Hallelujah. 
And we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. And next we have Lenitha Reynolds. Praise God. Uh, we also have Charmel Farley. Demarion Hampton. And Martha McKinney, all joining by Christian Experience. Amen. Need my oil, D. <laughs> Welcome to True Love Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Pastor, we have one more. Uh, we got one more. Yes. Amen. Uh, we have Sonia Ellis. She's uh, a candidate for baptism. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. I just stand my side. Praise God. Which was Sister Ellis? Sister Ellis? Raise your hand. I'll bless you. I'm coming for you. I know it's the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. I know it's your name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Welcome to True Love Missionary Baptist Church. I know it's your name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Welcome, sir. Amen. I'll come back to you. <laughs> Mother, can you lift your hat for me just a little bit? Praise God. I know it's your name, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Now, you know why they was clapping about you? Baptism. Amen. I know it's your name, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Everyone else, uh, we, we celebrate all of you who have come today to become a part of this church family. We especially want to celebrate you because God has done a special work in your life. Amen. He's confirmed for the others that this is a place where you can grow and be a part of this church family. But he has actually moved upon your heart to bring you into the family. Amen. So we want to welcome you in advance into the body of Christ. Come on, true love. Extend your hands. Welcome to true love. Amen. Welcome all of you to true love. Come on, true love. Let's welcome like we normally do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God, these are gifts. I said it before. I'll say it again. God, you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. And these are gifts to the body of Christ. These are gifts to True Love Missionary Baptist Church. They come, Lord God, as individuals to unite. Lord God, and they come with gifts, they come with different backgrounds, they come with different experiences, Lord God, they come with different passions, but Lord God, you brought them here, Lord God, to become a part of this church family, Lord God, so that there would be no schism in the body. We're not going to have anything missing, God, because they're here. And God, I truly believe that what we need is now in the house. God, I pray that you will release an understanding and a discernment about what their gifts, their talents, and their graces are. And I pray, Lord God, that you will stir up the gift. That they will use their gifts for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. That they'll use their gifts. Stir up the gift that you might receive the glory in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray that no matter what they go through, no matter what they experience in life, that Father, you'll always remind them that they matter to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our membership uh, counselors, they will speak with you all immediately following service. God bless you. Come on, let's welcome our new family members. My Lord and my God. Isn't God good? Yes, he is. Yeah, he's good. He's all right. All right. Amen. Did they read the communion scripture? Okay. Amen. Need one of our deacons, if you would please read from 1 Corinthians 11, please. Amen. 1 Corinthians.
23 through 34, please. Praise God. Oh, it's up on the screen. Go ahead, media. Y'all just showing off. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians 11, beginning of verse 23, amen. Thank you, Deacon Banks. We're reading first, first Corinthians 11, verse 23 through 34. And it reads, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, when he had sipped, and saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do so to the Lord's death till you come. Wherefore, whoever shall eat of the bread and drink of the cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so to let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened to the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another mm. and if any man hunger let him eat at home that ye come not together unto condemnation and let the rest will I set in order when I come amen thank you so much Deacon Banks let's look to God in prayer oh Lord we thank you for this great sacrifice that you made for us Lord God, we thank you, Father, for the assurance of your word that you commended your love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. We thank you, Lord God, for this memorial meal as we come to this table as we've done so many times before on a first Sunday, Lord God, to remember what he did for us on Calvary. Oh, Father, we thank you for the nails. We thank you for the crown of thorns. We thank you, Lord God, for the stripes. We thank you, Lord God, in the blessed name of Jesus. For even, Lord God, pierced his side, Lord God. And out came water and blood, symbolizing the birth of the church, O oh God. Father, in the blessed name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for everything that you've done for us, to us, through us and in spite of us. Now we pray that you'll pour out your spirit upon these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. And we pray, God, that the full benefits, Lord God, of this memorial meal will not only remind us of this sacrifice, but Lord God, we know that there's healing, for with his stripes we are healed. We pray it all in Jesus' name and for his name's sake. Amen. 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 You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. The 
blood that gives me strength from day to day. Blood 
lose its power. Hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, on the night in which Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples. Did y'all hear that when it snapped? That's every time the devil tried to break you. But you've got victory in Jesus. Let us now sup with the Lord. After the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to God. And then he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the remission of your sins. You hold in your hands, sisters and brothers, total sufficiency shed for you. Let us now commune with the Lord. Amen. I know it was a blood for me. Hallelujah. First of all, amen. If you would take your right hand and place it on your left shoulder, take your left hand, place it on your right shoulder. Now squeeze. Pastor just gave you a hug because I love you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, I want to thank God for our birthday squad for for uh, se- helping us celebrate our June birthdays. Amen. Now y'all know what week this is, don't you? This is church anniversary week. Amen. Fifty years of abundant grace. Hallelujah. And for that reason, my sisters and brothers, we've got a lot of work to do and a lot of things to pull together this week. So I'm going to suspend all studies for this week so that we can get busy and make sure that we have a celebration that we will always remember. Amen. If if that means you folding paper and folding bulletins, we need you to come on down. Amen. We need all hands on deck and doing everything that we need to do for this week to help out our church anniversary committee. Amen. I want you to know today is the last day if you're going to submit ads for our souvenir book as well as purchase tickets. Today is the very last day. Church anniversary committee, if you would please stand one more time for us. Amen. These are the people that you need to see today 
to make sure that you get a ticket and you are able to place your ad so that we will see your face in the place. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, uh, I want to remind all the teachers again, please let the office know I need your name, your school, and the grade that you teach because we do want to make sure that we bless you before you go back to school. And I believe we only got a few weeks left. It's like the first week of August or something like that, is it? First, oh, there you go, 8th of August. Amen. Back to school, back to school. Praise God. 12th. All right. Praise God. Amen. Well, to God be the glory. Amen. It's coming soon. How about that part? Glory to God. Amen. Uh, again, my sisters and brothers, I want to uh, remind you as well, in the month of August, the Lord, after we get through with uh, the writings on the wall, I'm going to teach a, a throwback series. And if you would please let the office know as well, reply to the text. They've been sending out texts. Some of you have been re responding, or you can leave it on the church voicemail. Whatever the, the word was your favorite sermon, amen, over the past few years since I've been here, uh, even as an associate minister let us know what that sermon is and we're gonna remix it amen rooka 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 we're gonna remix it we're gonna preach it again during the month of august which will be our throwback preaching series amen Please keep uh, Sister Brandy's mother, Sister Brandy Brown's mother, Sister Joanne Brown in prayer. Keep the family of Sister Willie Lee Smith in prayer. Please keep Reverend Dwight Grant Sr. in prayer. Amen. Reverend Grant had a medical procedure this past week, and it is one that has changed his life as well. Uh, we want to also remember Sister uh, uh, Evangelist, excuse me, Evangelist in training, uh, Cherie Smith. Please keep her in prayer also. Uh, Sister Cherie, uh, she had to have a stent put in last week, uh, just a few days ago. And so we want to pray that God will continue to minister and God will continue to hut, touch and heal her body. Uh, we had an opportunity to go see her a few times this past week, and she's doing good. She said the procedure was very painful, uh, but she She's doing good, and I'm so grateful to God. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to y'all up any longer, but I'm so grateful to God that the cardiologists, the doctors couldn't figure out what to do. Cardiologists couldn't figure out what to do at first, and then the cardiologists said, wait, let me get a second opinion. Let me ask one of my colleagues who works for our partnership, and that was the doctor that did the angiogram and found out she had a blockage in her heart. Look at the Lord. They were planning on releasing her again so that she could go home and have another episode. But God said, uh-uh. We're going to take care of that today. We're going to take care of that. And so again, we praise God. Again, to those of you who are our first-time guests, we praise God for your presence. And again, if you do have a home church, please take our greetings back to your church family. And to all the church family here, true love, I love y'all. Let's stand up. We're going home now. Amen. You are the source of my strength. Uh-oh. Yes. Hold up, y'all. Black, gold, and blue are our colors, and we start on Friday. Come on, RJ. <laughs> Amen. You are the strength of my life. Wonderful in you. Praise the Lord. God
Father, we thank you that, Lord God, uh, you, Lord, had a plan to save us from the foundation of the world. Thank you, God, that we weren't afterthoughts. That, Lord God, we've always been on your mind. We've always been in your heart. We've always been in your spirit. Thank you for loving us the way you do and for always reminding us, Lord God, that we matter to you. Father, we just pray in the blessed name of Jesus that you'll help us to solemnly and joyfully enter into this covenant, recognizing that that covenant, Lord God, has teachings and disciplines to help us to become dynamic disciples for the Lord Jesus Christ. For Lord God, when all has been said and done and we come to the end of this life, may only, only that which we do for Christ be that which lasts. May you be pleased, Lord God, with our lives and may you speak unto us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I shall now make you rulers over many. Now unto him who is absolutely able to do anything and everything but fail, we praise your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Who's the banquet last night? Who's that next Friday?